Good morning. It's just after 5 a.m. here in Calgary, and we're going to do a progressive hip series, um, which means that we're going to start on the floor. We're going to pay attention to like the component joint of the leg bone in the pelvis. So we're going to be looking at this sucker here, how this leg bone moves in the pelvis out in this direction and then in this direction and just notice what else is involved in the movement that maybe shouldn't be or honor and nurture the movement that really should be moving and then we're going to come up towards standing and we're going to get into warrior two using a block at the wall to really start to explore the leg bone connection to the foot as well as further up the chain to the rib cage okay so that's how we're going to focus today. Let me move this guy out of the way. You're going to need a block. You're going to need a block and a strap. And you're also going to need um, a chair for later on. Okay. So let's start with having the strap close by. And you're not going to get into it right the second, but just have it close. So you're going to start on your back. And just notice what it is that you feel. And then from here, we're just going to take the legs wide into butterfly. We're not doing Baddha Konasana, where we bring the feet together. We're keeping the feet exactly where they are. And then as we move through this hip joint, we're coming onto the outer edge of the feet. And then we're coming back up. So sometimes people will say, let the knees fall out, which there's some truth to, but I want you to think more of the actual articulating joint, which is the leg bone in the pelvis. So as you do that, notice that the pelvis wants to tick for, tilt forward or back. And then only move as far as that pelvis is quiet, that your breath is easy, that you're not holding your rib cage. All right, good. Now we're going to do one leg. So now one leg is going to fall out to the side. Again, same motion, leg bone moving in the hip socket. But watch what happens to the opposite leg. So does the opposite leg want to go that way? Do you want to brace? Do you want to hold? I only want you to go as far as your pelvis stays quiet. So the movement's not going to be nearly as big. It's not about going through a big range of motion. It's just noticing your level of control and coordination and articulating through this leg bone and the hip socket. Yeah. And then other side. So it becomes really curious to see if you start to use up by your ribs or your jaw to control the movement. And so see if you can, if you're doing that, then see if you can just go only as far as you don't need to use the upper part of your body to control the movement. So your movement will get less. It's okay, just because you've got less movement doesn't mean anything horrible is going to happen. It just means that the movement is more pure and more precise and now you're actually specifically creating the communication channel between your brain and the myofascial structures. Yeah. But if you compensate by bracing in order to go further, that's the pattern that you're building. So which one would you prefer? Would you prefer the pattern that's more specific to the joint that you're working or do you want a compensated pattern? So then based off of that, choose how you want to move. Okay. Okay. Now come back to butterfly again. Legs come wide. Okay, good. So now you've got that. Now grab your strap and you're going to take your strap around your legs so that it's mid thigh height. Whoops. Mid thigh height. And you're going to buckle it up. And you're going to do pretty much the exact same thing, but now you've got some resistance. So bring your hands to the front of your hips. This is going to be a key part of this. And just raise one foot off the floor and the other. I want you to notice where your hip flexors are. Get really, really clear on that. Okay. And then press your legs wide into the strap. So exactly the same movement we've been just doing, but now the strap is here, so it provides resistance. Notice if your hip flexors want to kick in. Notice if you want to tuck or tilt your pelvis. 
Notice if your rib cage wants to get involved or if you want to push your feet to the floor. All right, good, and let that go. Okay, so the legs are moving wide there. Keep the strap, we're gonna take it up into a Supta Padangustasana. So from here, you're taking the strap around your leg and you're bringing it up to the sky, and then bring your elbows down to the floor. And keeping your arms easy, Relaxing your jaw and then bringing the leg back down. Good. And then other side. Good, and then bring that down. Okay, let's roll on over and come into kneeling. And let's just do a gateway as we come up towards standing. So from here, beach ball, side bend, hand gently rests on this leg. So again, notice if you've rounded forward or rounded back, the articulating joint is through the spine. And if you want to bring this arm up alongside your ear, then you can. Good. And then come on back like that. Great. Okay. And then whoop over to this side and over you go. It's so interesting as you gain the curiosity about how your body moves, you start to shift out of a cycle of relief, pain, relief, pain, relief, pain, relief, pain. And then you start to move into this phase I call retraining. And when you re in the phase of retraining, you're starting to create new movement patterns so that the way that you move is different. So the symptoms that are associated with the old movement patterns start to go away. Good. And then come on up. Okay, come on up. Okay, let's come to the wall. And you're gonna come and just do a little wall sit here. Now you'll notice that I'm not coming into something really, really deep. I'm coming into something about, about a place that you could be for 30 minutes if you needed to be. We're not gonna be there that long. But if you needed to be here, you could be here for 30 minutes. Okay, and then I want you to feel your three points in the bottom of your feet, the center of the heel, the ball of the foot, the base of the pinky toe. And then I'd like you to push into one foot a little bit more so this leg gets a bit stronger. And then take the pressure off and push into this foot. So two analogies to think about. One is, is you've got blueberries underneath your feet and you're squishing with one side and then releasing and squishing with the other side and releasing. The other is you can think of is you've got a gas pedal, gas pedal. So whichever image works better for you if the images work. But you'll, one thing I want you to pay attention to is as you're putting all sorts of strength and push into one leg, and then as you transfer that load from this leg into this leg, your upper body is not moving left and right. So it's just one leg gets stronger and then ease off and then the other leg gets stronger. So you are shifting your weight, but you're not doing this. Okay. So you shouldn't feel your body sliding at all left to right. You'll just feel the weight change between your left and right sides. Feel those three points in the bottom of your feet. 
your back is not flattening in order to do the movement. Okay, good. And both feet at the same time. Push. And then slide up. Okay. Now grab your block. I'm going to sneeze. Hold on a second. <coughs> Excuse me. One more. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So we've got a block. You can use a block like this or you can use a block like this. It's totally up to you, like a cork block or a foam block or a thinner block. But you're going to step, you're going to be against the, close to the wall as wide as this block is. So your bum's not touching the wall necessarily, but you've got this block and you're holding the block with your leg. Okay. Now your pelvis, you're getting, you're moving yourself into a warrior two. So your pelvis is level. Yeah. It's not coming into a position like this. So your pelvis is level. Your pelvis is likely gone a bit diagonal and you're holding that block about mid thigh. So it's not at your bum here. So now, just to, if, if, because mine's thinner, I'm closer to the wall. If you're thicker, you're going to be further away from the wall, okay? But the idea is not you're just leaning against the wall and placing the block. You're away from the wall, and then you're placing the block, okay? And so now you're just going to hold the block with your leg. So this is very similar when we were on the floor and you're moving your legs wide, this is very, very similar. I mean, it's a different orientation of your legs. We're oriented to gravity differently, but the idea of the leg pushing this way is not dissimilar. Okay, now notice if you want to use your shins or your feet, you're utilizing your hip to hold the leg. Now there might be a little bit of releasing kind of experience in the middle in the inner thighs it might not be don't aim for it but there might be okay good and then other side rotate the leg the other way just be very conscientious of your hips because oftentimes we'll drop this foot and that will happen with your pelvis so just don't you don't need to hold your belly just notice where your pelvis is in space allow that foot to drop place the block now what might happen is that yeah and so that will give you an indication that either you're too far away from the wall or you're just learning to hold the block so it might be a true weakness or it just might be a um, coordination yeah so if you want you can hold the block like this just like that as you start to gain a greater understanding of how that leg bone moves in the pelvis yeah just like that okay good and then come the other side and hold that block and if you want you can start to bring your arms into it you can even start to move into a side and a side but watch my legs my legs are staying exactly where they are yeah And then maybe to the side and the side. All right, slide up, drop the block. All right, now notice from here what it is that you feel. Okay, now let's come forward here. One leg in front of the other. Hands here, feel where the pelvis is, and lean forward. Okay. So watch to see what happens with your knee. If your knee hyperextends, it's often an indication that your pelvis stopped moving as well as it could have been. So come up a little bit. And then come up. Okay. And then switch sides. Okay, so pelvis here, and you're starting to hinge forward. Now what I meant by that in terms of the, the pelvis stopping moving, you might still be moving, but if this knee starts to go into a hyperextension, then the movement is trying to happen through here 
as opposed to through here. So pay attention to the articulating joint, and if you notice this knee starting to extend, then just come up to a point where it's not doing that, okay? Just become a little bit more um, conscientious of that movement pattern. It becomes really, really cool when you start to notice just the creativity that you and your brain have for your movement patterns. Like it's a remarkable design of ourselves. And so we want to be able to harness that creativity so that we move really well and then do some really cool stuff. So we can use the creativity comp to compensate and kind of leave us where we are. Or we can use that same creativity to actually move along further. So it just depends on what your outcome is that you're seeking. Whether you want to stay where you are in status quo or whether you want to move into something different. And both are completely reasonable, right? Like it makes sense, right? There's some times where all we want to do is stay where we are. So just kind of think about what it is that you so, so desire. Okay, let's bring the legs wide. Let's rotate those leg bones and then sink. So feeling those three points at the bottom of your feet. That's it. And then coming on up. Perfect. All right, so now we're in standing and we're just going to finish here in standing. And what I want you to notice is the center of the heel, the ball of the foot, the base of the pinky toe. And how your feet, I love to say, they punctuate your posture. And your pelvis is the platform through which your legs move. So together they work really, really well when it comes to walking or climbing stairs or hiking or really doing anything that involves the movement of our legs. And then feel that platform of your pelvis and then how your rest of your body sits on top of it. So just notice where that is in space. And then breathe. Notice and breathe. Lovely. So now from here, you might be joining me right at this time. We're just closer to 5.30 a.m. here in Calgary, and you might want to come up, so to speak, and join me for a cup of tea, or you might be ready to go for a run. Maybe you're watching this later in the day. Wherever you are at, take five breaths and then continue on with the rest of your day, okay? You have got this today. You have a really great one. We will see you tomorrow morning. Take good care. Bye-bye.